Shabam. Happy Monday. The uh, Grias went green today. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I guess that's uh, it's a little under uh, seven kilowatts. Um, yeah, there's sun, sun power, sun power solar panels, and it's pretty cool. They're just like a modular, uh, you know, kit, all black and murdered out looking proper. I guess each panel is like 320 watts, and they got like little inverters built in to each panel. It's all connected up to your phone. You can see like what it's doing or what it's not doing. Take on a little uh, road trip to see the business, business end of things. Yeah, the, uh, the people did just a bang out job. Like, I look at things like, you know, oh, are the uh, screws, you know, driven in like square? Are they, you know, are the heads nice and flush with the, you know, clamp? And they are, and just everything is like super, just nice and tidy. And it just looks like really nice, super professional. The guys that uh, put it in were just, you know, awesome. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. I guess it's like a well, it says on there AC disconnect and uh, some other thing. So pretty cool, and it works too. Like went and turned on the, a bunch of electrical stuff and looked at the meter. And granted, it's not like hooked up to uh, PG&E yet, um, but it, it does show up on the meter uh, when you turn on a bunch of stuff. The uh, meter starts running. Got a little uh, package. That's a, uh, a 200 watt, 100 ohm uh, braking resistor for the uh, Hitachi. It's a WJ200. So yeah, they're, it's crazy they're so cheap. I mean, you buy like a Hitachi one and be like really expensive. So I'll let you know how it goes. But uh, Hitachi has a, a pretty uh, really easy to understand uh, like diagram on the different duty cycles you can get depending on the ohm rating of the uh, braking resistor. Or as I like to call it, barking resistor so you yeah, have to blow a couple holes in the enclosure to mount that and uh, bob will be our uncle and then these little jewels jewels yes uh the bottom box for the uh, machine is an old toolbox like a one from like the 70s heavy duty and it had some funny like stamped plated handles so got rid of those and wanted to get some cool replacements, you know, something that had a little swagger. And McMaster, I mean, you can't find a load rated handle or a handle that looks cool for less than like 15, 15 plus bucks a handle. So found these guys on Amazon, or not Amazon, eBay, Flea Bay. And they were like 15 bucks for four and they, uh, they're really close to the, to the hole size on the, that are already on the drawers. And the cool thing though is open them up. Listen to that. This is like some gnarly fiber filled plastic and flip it over. What's it say on there? Focus. Anyways, it says Germany. Germany. So yeah, I think these are like some NASA grade handles. Super score. So. Uh, yeah, all right. Finally, the first completed sub-assembly. Uh, finished putting together 
the drawbar cylinder assembly today. Uh, parkerized it yesterday and um, finished putting the cylinder and everything together today. Uh, turned out pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm super stoked. Uh, I like, I mean, it's my favorite part of cars, you know, building machines, whatever uh, is the final assembly. It's like the, it's what I live for. It's the instant gratification of, you know, putting this thing together after you've, you know, spent countless hours, weeks and months, you know, thinking about it 24 seven and, you know, working on it eight, 10 hours a day. Here it is. It's what it's all about. So I will talk a little bit about the straw bar cylinder setup. Um, so this is a, a two inch hydraulic cylinder that uh, was made. Um, it's a like a steel uh, steel cylinder with a, a coated aluminum uh, sleeve. Um, these top and bottom plates are made out of uh, 4140. And there is a, uh, if you're familiar with how one of these, you know, floating top hat kind of draw bar setups work, um, you have to be able to slide the hat, you know, through there. So when this activates, it uh, comes up. Actually, let me, uh, let me go grab it. I'll be right back. The hat, the hat, uh, the hat slides in here. So then the thing grabs here. So the first iteration of this, there was no um, connector piece here. It was just like this um, and lots of people do it that way. Um, but I don't think uh, most people are using, you know, upwards of like 4,000 uh, pounds of draw bar tension. So uh, this cylinder coupled with the uh, 40 to one uh, air to hydraulic intensifier can, you know, you could rip the machine apart if you wanted to. Uh, so the goal or the hope is to not really have to worry about, you know, the TTS uh, pull out. So we'll see, you know, it's an experiment, I'll let you know how it goes. But uh, back to the draw bar. Um, the first iteration didn't have this. We tested it out and like you could uh, see a noticeable amount of flex right here, uh, rightfully so, you know, this is not connected. So this was added. It's a big old chunk of steel held in with two big old flatheads or counters, yeah, countersunk. Uh, and that stiffened her up proper. So, and then on the end of the cylinder, there's a double nut and you can adjust the, you know, height of the, or the length of the cylinder. And the cylinder is hard, hard line, comes down to here and there's a, a neat little billet clamp that holds it. And once it gets to here, it transitions to a, a hydraulic line. Um, yeah, you notice that uh, super swanky pinstripe. Yeah, I like doing stuff like that too. And uh, that's sort of my forte. I mean, I'm under no illusions, you know, what a machine like this looks like in a, uh, a month, but um, it's so much fun. On the real. It's pretty cool. This is just, uh, it's just some uh, cheap vinyl, uh, striping gives it a little flair, you know. I wanted to mention one more, one more thing. Uh, the intensifier that runs this cylinder is single acting. It's got a big spring in the uh, diaphragm, and this cylinder is also single acting. Uh, you can see if I rotate it around here. This is the vent for uh, the dead side of the cylinder. So when it cycles, you know, if there wasn't a vent, there could be like pressure you know, built up in there. 
So that's where it breathes. That's the blowhole. Uh, you can see there's a uh, there's no there's no seal on the rod. There's not a rod seal or like a pack in or anything. This is just a um, it's actually like a reamed perfect. Uh, it's like a bush. It's a bush. Whatever you call that. And the spring inside of here is actually uh, it's a Toyota. It's a 22R valve spring that was cut and you know ground to uh, fit inside of here. And have enough travel yet, still, um, still like be able to compress. It was sort of tricky. Like you would need like some. Uh, like a die spring or something that is strong yet has got enough travel. Um, but the uh, the old 22R valve spring seems to work just fine. So it's cool to you know be able to incorporate parts and pieces. You know, not like cobbled, but incorporated. So yeah, this is this is the drawbar. That's the drawbar in a nutshell. I'm gonna stop talking because I'm talking too much. So thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to subscribe, shoot me a comment, and uh, we'll catch you real soon.